Welcome to Life as an NPC, I am Corbin Scythe and today we're going to continue to play the letter. And uh, let's see, we were Zachary, we are Zachary. And I don't remember why right now, but we are going back to the Ermengarde Mansion. Right, now I remember, we are going back to talk to Miss Hana about the fact that her ghost, uh, there's a ghost in her picture, or rather a ghost is messing with her picture. And uh, we'll see how she responds to that. That will, ooh, now we're starting to combine stories. Now this will be great. Let's go. In hindsight, this is a dumb idea. That is to say, rushing to a client I barely know's home first thing in the morning with news of a ghost lady potentially haunting their newly bought property. And before that, let's go here and yeah, something from last save, uh, from when I last played. Oh, and there's a bunch of bizarre looking pictures of Miss Hana that I brought as proof too. So yeah, dumbest idea in the history of dumb ideas, all things considered. Traveling to the outskirts of Anslem village at the crack of dawn with only my bike as company, equally so. Personally, I don't think any of them would take whatever I'm going to say well, no matter how nice or accommodating they are. Ashton himself would tell me the same thing. Odds are he'll laugh at the... Uh, He'll laugh at it in my face for good measure, if he doesn't freak out at me first for listening to his warnings. Still, that's a whole separate can of worms I'll open at a different time, seeing as I'm already standing at the right front porch waiting for someone to answer the door. More than anything, Miss Wright needs to know there's possibly nothing safe in this place, warning from friends be damned. If only someone would answer the door sooner. Come on. I try to ignore the looming presence that the large ornate door gives off as I press the doorbell for the fourth time. Its shrill ringing merely echoes, carried off by another warm passing breeze. The first time I come to this, I came to this place, I found myself basking in the silence of it offers. Now the atmosphere is just heavy, packed with trepidation and tension. Isabella's right; it does radiate a creepy kind of vibe. And with the image of from the day before constantly flashing in my mind, the unease becomes harder to ignore as each second drifts by. Not wanting to spend more time here than necessary, I ring the bell again. Another long second ticks by without uh, anyone answering the door. If this fails, I can always go to Ash. Not really the most sensible course of action either, but waiting here ain't doing me any good. For all I know, the rights could be out of town. As luck would have it, just as I'm about to turn on my heel, a loud thump rises from the other side. It's followed by heavy footfalls and a string of very colorful expl expletives about one's parentage. Colorful expletives. Okay, so here's the one thing. I don't like how the storytelling here is. I This kind of storytelling really works well for uh, when it was Hana, Miss Wright. But now that it's Sack, the way, uh, the narrative, the, how it's being narrated, should be written in a different way. Because this is, it's very professional, it is very strict, it is very upper class. Uh, it's, now that it's Sack, it should be a little bit softer, e more easygoing. Uh, so, sure, maybe he used those that kind of dictionary, but colorful exp expletives. I don't even know the meaning of the word. As uh, it's a small thing, but uh, and that's the kind of detail I would like to see in this game. Actually, that how it's being narrated differs from person to person. Didn't we have that bloody annoying doorbell replaced yesterday? That I have charged has cost me a fortune and she can't even fix this music. I see. And where the hell is? Your eyes of another pearl faced prat is pressing that blighted bell. I swear I'll cut back. The door swings open and a very irate Mr. Wright greets me. His partly rumpled appearance a clear testament to how early the hour is. And who might you be? Oh, you still don't remember me, you piece of shit. I don't recall asking the movers to show up this early. I was prepared to face Miss Wright, their butler more so. But Mr. Wright? 
I don't quite know what to make of him yet. Story updated. He surely knows how to make an impression on Gil. I give him that. Albeit a rude one. I only caught sight of him yesterday as he is directing the movers. Oh, the party has, haven't been yet. Of course not. Although from uh, how exasperated he sounded then, it seemed like more yelling was done than actual giving of directions. Needless to say, I'd like to believe those instances in all uh, there is to the guy. Miss Wright at the end of the day did marry him. Standing before him like now though, it's, it's a different story altogether. Despite the difference in our respective heights, he manages to make it appear like he is the one looking down at me, not the other way around. An apology instinctively forms in my mouth before anything else when he arches an eyebrow at my lack of response. Well, um, that's not exactly why I'm here, uh, Mr. Wright, yeah? Right, of course, the one and only. And what can I do for you this fine morning? Have I seen you somewhere before? Bloody peasants all look the same to me. Dude, this person is gonna ground you to a dust if you don't stop that. I... Uh, yeah, I'm actually... It doesn't matter, I don't care. I've got someplace important to be at today. Just spit out what you want or be gone. I haven't got all day. His eyes are sharp and expecting, and expecting in spite of his indifferent tone. The very impression of someone whose sharp wits has served him well throughout life, the kind you have to carefully choose your words around. Disconcerting how a simple conversation can easily seem like a ruthless form of social maneuvering. I can see why Miss Wright would want to steer clear of it, if only for a short while. And sometimes the only way out of the game is to be honest. He will not. Ho. Oh. He will not uh, agree to us being friends with Hana. So I'm going with photographer for luxury living, but I am also interested to know how he responds. So let's see. To me being friends with Hana, but I'm going with photographer for real. Sorry, sir. I, I was just. <gasps> Hana likes us better if we do that. Oh man. You see, I'm a friend of Hana, and a friend of Hana. <laughs> yes, sir. Is I brought shoot in this airline as my answer? Did I mispronounce something? Or... No, no, not at all. You didn't. She, my wife, has never mentioned a friend like you. <laughs> there we <laughs> fucking go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, and uh, didn't expect him to be so nice about it though. Mm. I'm in luxury living, sir. He eyes a business card I hand him with a completely passive expression. And now Hana is not friends with us anymore. Not as much in a way. He turns it between his fingers without really reading the letters printed before handing it back in the same blasé manner one usually reserves for people below their station. Or a nuisance. With him, it seems more of the latter than the former. Mr. Steele. Just Zack would do, sir. <laughs> uh, I can see why. <laughs> you should hear what they say about my name. Although I'm of the opinion those don't sound as unpleasant as yours to the ear. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? I'm using what people can come up with in their leisure time, no? Well then, to what reason do we owe this second visit, Zack? Right, like, like I said earlier, I'm the photographer from Luxury Living. I'm here about the photo shoot yesterday and... His arrow, eyes narrow at that, mouth tightening into a small frown, passive stance dissolving into a rigid one. It ain't a complete lie what I came here for. But it ain't the whole truth either. Didn't you already wrap that one up? So I thought, but some of the photos uh, got ruined. I believe my wife was the one with you then. Even mentioned a little tete a tete with the photographer. Sorry about that. That was you, wasn't it? Uh, yes. Actually, sir, there was something I forgot to discuss with your. And you had to show up at such an hour for something you forgot. Why wasn't there any notice about this little visit? 
It was an error on my part, sir. I do apologize for not letting you know in advance. Terribly unprofessional for someone going under the name of an esteemed publication like Luxury Living, if you ask me. Of course, even if there was a word of some sort, that butler does not check my emails as often as I would have liked. But straight up walking in here this early isn't the most sensible thing to do either. The matter was a bit urgent, and my art director wanted it done as soon as possible before I hand him the finished prints. Not my problem now, is it? A common courtesy would be to wait for replies before barging in. You do well to remember that. I once fired someone before they could even submit an application. Sent an email in the morning and suddenly sauntered in the office looking knackered mere hours after. Bloody Watkins. That aside, unfortunately, you're going to have to come back some other day. Yeah, you're just an unpleasant person in general. You're just awful. You see, darling wife left not a moment to go. How did you know? I have not an inkling where she went or when she'll be back. So you're better off. Love, is it the movers? Heh! <laughs> you. Oh, let's have a ta 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 Ha! He stops speaking altogether and the compliment and complacent expression he has collapses on itself. Slowly he turns just as his wife walks up to him, a step too lively to comfort, a smile too sweet to be honest. She has very likely heard everything her husband and I have talked about. Going off somewhere. I've got the few things I want them to transfer already. Marianne made this splendid arrangement for the music room and... Love, are you listening? I thought you already left, Buttercup. She musters a frown, a pounce more like. The mischievous gleam in her eyes when she glances at me says all there is I, all there is I need to know. I would have laughed at her antics if it wouldn't offend the other man. But as it is, it's better to let his wife have her fun without any reaction from me. I'm treading on dangerous grounds with him already. Well, I most certainly have not left yet. I wouldn't be standing <laughs> here if I did, would I? <laughs> oh, that's why- Oh! That is why she, her uh, relationship grew even though she couldn't hear me because she did hear me. Oh. Uh, Oh man, I, I could not foresee that. Oh, that is, oh, jeez. I am really bad at getting these two together, aren't I? Of course you wouldn't be, darling. But don't you need to be somewhere else today? Something, something with Marianne? Shopping girl things? With the interior designer? Are you... Are you damaging the brain? Oh, I'll be leaving in a few. Unless you want to join us. Oh, heavens no. No thanks, darling. I'm afraid <laughs> my liver... Oh, it's killing me today. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for drinking absinthe. I thought as much. You needn't have to worry. I'll be gone in a few. It's just that I heard we have a visitor. What kind of person would I be if I didn't greet him before leaving? A very gracious one, I'm sure. Zachary, right? Zach? It's a pleasure to see you again. Likewise, ma'am. I was actually looking for you. Is that so? What for? A huge display of unprofessionalism is what it's for. Shush, darling. Let the man speak. Yeah. Go play with your shoelaces or whatever rich people do. I'm sure it isn't anything like that if he has to come all the way here, yes? It's about yesterday. The photos you asked, I mean. The copies are ready, but... My hand still, uh, still says I'm about to fish the prints out of my pockets. A short second passes as we, that which strikes me how I didn't think this through at all. How I'll go about telling her regarding the strange photos, or revealing this to her in the presence of another person. Her husband gazing over us like a hawk doesn't provide any sort of comfort either. And just like that, all the words I have been practicing to say on the way here inevitably fall stiffly out of my mouth. Miss Wright must have noticed my hesitance, because shortly she gives her husband's arm a gentle squeeze and a tender smile gracing her face. Unlike the first, this one is meant to appease. Love, I think Hansi might 
might need some of your input for the final guest list. Could you check on him, please? Bollocks! Why in all Luxborn do I have to be there? Doing tedious jobs of what he's being paid for! Oh, okay, for that part, yeah. Yeah, I can agree to that. Sort of. Because if we end up with people whose faces you do not want to show up in our housewarming party, we won't be hearing the end of it. <laughs> Unless a heavy dose of liquor is involved. You know what the doctor said about that. Wow. She is... She, wow, she is feisty. Please do poor Hansi and your liver a favor, hmm? He can handle that on his own, Buttercup. And my liver is doing just fine. You just claimed it to being in pain. I'm sure it is. But I don't know, love. I think I caught a glimpse of the name Mitch Lakes, was it? I think it was Mitch Lakes on it when I checked with Hansi earlier. Mitch Lakes! That is preposterous. You should see for yourself. It was quite a list. Who put that blighted twat in there? And that's why I'm asking you to look over it before I do so tonight. <sighs> Very well. But even with that promise, he doesn't appear ready to leave. Short of passing through the doors, he stops and glances back at me. All without bothering to hide the distrust in his eyes. Luke, dear, I'll be fine. Go back to your butler. I'm not some pregnant wife you have to worry about. <laughs> it's okay, I have to double check. Is this before or after the party? This is 17th of October. This is before the party because the party was. When was it? No, see, this is from yesterday. Yeah, okay, so it's the 27th of October. And 28th, tomorrow. Yeah. So the pregnant wife. Wow. That is. That would have been quite some foreshadowing had we seen Sax play through first before Hana. Fine, fine. I have to go to that little ankle biter's career day later anyway. I don't see why I have to go there. Kylie's your goddaughter. And yet, she has you around her little fingers, darling. <laughs> That's basically the same thing. If he ever has an answer to that, we don't get to hear it uh, above the heavy thud the door makes and Miss Wright, Wright's own uh, weary exhale after she's sure her husband is out of earshot. She's nothing but apologetic when she fixes her gaze back to me, and I can't help but return the same to her. I am so sorry you had to deal with that. My husband can be a bit trying when he really applied himself. It's fine, Miss Wright. No harm done. It was my fault for showing up here unannounced. And this might be strange coming from me, but he does have the right to be wary. The press can be quite vicious when it wants to be. Caught unexpectedly, they'll pick you apart. It is not surprising why he acted the way he did around me. Sweetie, if Luke treats every journalist who shows up here like that, I'm afraid we'll end up with a harassment lawsuit <laughs> hanging over our heads sometime in the future. Vicious or not, some sort of finesse has to be exercised when dealing with them. I'm sorry, I hope that wasn't too offensive. Not, Not at, at all, Miss Wright. Besides, I don't think an interior design magazine would be interested in who harassed who this week. Unless it has something to do with fighting over tastefully arranged furniture. <laughs> but even then, I don't think our readers would be too interested. Mm -hmm. Oh, dearie. You've got a lot to learn. <laughs> You really have no idea how a single tattle can ignite a spark in a crowd. Of course, at the end of the day, it's still the thought that counts. It's still a lovely anniversary gift for my husband. Hmm. That is one hell of a gift. No matter. Let's just go. She doesn't wait for an answer and immediately wanders over a car parked some distance from us. I'm sure I find myself trailing after her. A chauffeur, a chauffeur automatically opens a passenger side door to, as she nears, and she gestures for him to, for me to follow when she climbs into the back seat. To where are we going exactly? On a date, of course, darling. 
I need to get out of this stuffy house for a while. Moving in, planning the party. It's starting to get suffocating in there. Luke and Hansi can have their fun while I'm gone. I don't care. I'm getting out because I can. Another minute in there and I'll drown. Mm -hmm. My bike. There are, of course, a lot of things questionable about her invitation. Why she's asking a person she has only known for less than two days in the first place is one. How appropriate this is, being another, being another. But the rest of it crashes the moment she shoots me an imploring look. Please, I can have someone send it back to your address later. <laughs> and it's just a trip to the city for some furniture, nothing more, I assure you. Marianne will be with us, and maybe you can tell me why you're here on the way. Okay, so that wasn't a lie, okay. Uh, guess it wouldn't hurt. I might have to leave early, though. Excellent, then. Hop in. That's what they often say, yes? <laughs> this can't be a good idea, but I really don't have any other choice, do I? Especially with the way her eyes light up when I agree to it. In my pocket, the very picture of her remains faceless. A voiceless shadow hanging threatening, uh, threateningly between us, unknown to her. Journal update. Let's read that soon. If someone told me I'd be spending my entire morning being dragged around the half the downtown Luxborn uh, looking for furniture, I probably would have smi simply smiled at them. Then perhaps even giving them a good friendly pat on the shoulder and wish them a nice day. Not that I find anything wrong with this at all. On the contrary, this is most definitely a nice change of pace after weeks of getting bogged down by several freelance gigs and shutting myself inside my apartment whenever I can. If only the weather would be a lot nicer. If only the weather would be a whole lot nicer. The kinder with the less sun and more clouds, perhaps. Everyone wants a bit gloomy uh, weather here, it seems. With the mid-morning mid sun slowly beating down on us as high noon approaches, I can see why Mr. Wright skipped out on this trip. The bright side is, the whole thing seems to have put Miss Wright in a less somber mood. After the fifth store, her pace is considerably li livelier, her gestures less guarded than the one she displayed at the mansion earlier. The presence of another person might have helped as well. Although Miss McCullough seems less predisposed to small talk, preferring to keep to herself most of the time and let, and let Miss Wright lead us wherever. She did acknowledge me with a small nod when we were introduced earlier, but that didn't make standing outside the store together any less awkward while we wait for our client to finish her inquiry inside. So, um, interior design, huh? She cast me a sidelong glance before returning to her notes again, her pen scratching faintly against the paper in quick successive strokes. Ah, there goes that. I did say I'm not any good at starting or keeping conversations going, didn't I? She doesn't look back up again and I take that as my cue to stop any attempt at striking a dialogue with her and keep myself occupied with some other thing. Except the... Except what we have here is just Luxborn and its busy streets, people going on, going about their their day like normal, cars moving in and out of sight, heading to no to who knows where. Nothing remarkable, really. The ease with which a person can fade into the background here is reflective of the kind of city Luxborn will always be. But the humdrum is one thing I learned to live with. Needless to say, it doesn't usually stay that way. There are times when it uh, would come alive, make itself known, and reassert itself back to the world. However, those moments are few and far in between. Then again, then again, with what graces the news channel lately, I'm starting to think it's going to, ha to happen sooner. Can't say I'm looking forward to what it'll bring. Luxury living, is it? Her voice effectively cuts through my thoughts just as I count the thirteenth passenger by wearing a hat today. Beside me I can hear the faint rustling of paper and the clicking of her pen as she stashes them back to her bag. Excuse me, what? The magazine you're working for. It's luxury living, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah. You've been featured by them before, I take it? A few years back, yes. For just some issues. My designs still appear from time to time, though. Not as frequent as before. 
Gotta have room for new talents, right? Your design. So not only are you an interior designer, you actually create things. That's interesting. It may not show in her face, but the pride is evident in her voice. Good folks, the people running the publication. Tell me, is DK still on the editorial team? I wouldn't know. I've only started taking jobs from them this year. Freelancer, you know. Good man, that guy. Anyone in our field should meet him. <laughs> he had a lot of things to say about art, all of them relevant. Learned a lot from him, actually, even if we both came from two different fields. I hope he's in a good place. I haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> anyway, your portfolio must have been good if they gave you the job. They don't easily assign big features to freelancers like this. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I am, but experience, you know? The more you practice it, the more you learn the tricks of the trade. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that's something I even noticed uh, now that I'm uh, doing YouTube. Uh, even if I don't take any courses or anything like that, I can see what I've been doing wrong in the past and say, holy shit, I performed poorly back then and I'm doing a lot better already after just one year you know I could be a TV show host perhaps I know what you mean still you've got to keep up with the competition each year a new talent emerges and well you never know clients can be a bit fickle minded with their choices believe me <laughs> speaking of do you think you'd be up for a new client after this I think so Depends on how big the project is. She reaches into her bag again. This time to pull out a business card which she hands over to me. Oh, that's amazing. When you're free, send your portfolio to Chris. He's my assistant. Oh. He's been looking for a decent photographer to help with updating the studio's portfolio. Nothing urgent, but the sooner the better. Not sure if I'll have the time to squeeze this in, but... All right, I'll give it a go once. Marianne, could you look this over for me? And before we do that, let's see. Ooh, he looks angry. Disturbed, Zachary decided to show the photographs to Hana herself. We haven't gotten there yet. At that very moment, Miss Wright emerges from the store. When I look back to Miss McCullough, a mask of professionalism has returned to her. Or at least that is what it is trying to be. There's a different light in her eyes as she faces her, a flicker of familiarity and recognition. I'd say it's fondness, but that would be too presumptuous. Whatever it is doesn't last and is briskly swept under the firm tone of her voice I assumes. Definitely. Is there a problem? They said they don't have the colors you suggested. Do you hmm. think we can change it around for a bit? It might take a while if we insist what we want, and you know I'd rather not worry about this later. I think it'd be better if I handle this one myself. <laughs> Excuse me. She walks into the shop without another word, leaving the two of us standing outside. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? As soon as she's out of air earshot, however, Miss Wright lets out a giggle and swipes the business card cleanly off my hand. She smiles, a bemused little thing spreading across her face, and waves the card in front of me. I wish she'll do that more often, the smiling thing. It suits her more than the other one she frequently shows to the media. I look away and the next thing I know you're picking up women! Oh! On the streets, while the sun is high no less. I'm not sure if I should be appalled or amazed. You should be jealous, lady! Whatever happened to the Zack I met a day ago? About as tall as you, photographer, quite the gentleman. To tell you the truth, I'm a bit disappointed he's gone. <laughs> it ain't like that, Miss Wright. <laughs> you forgot shy and awkward. <laughs> and I'm sure Miss McCullough is not the kind of woman to let herself be picked up by strangers. Let alone people she barely knows. That is what a stranger is. Oh, shush. Let me have my fun. <laughs> and didn't I say you can call me Hana? She gives the card back to me, nevertheless, and with it, her mood fades into a more pensive one. 
An odd look settles on her face, yearning, a bit wistful, as she looks back towards the shop's display window. There's nothing remotely interesting in it for me when I follow her line of sight though. A few trinkets here and there, a fur rug, a sofa, a wooden side table and a lamp, all tastefully picked and arranged to resemble a typical yet antique living room. On second thought, it does look comfortable. But why they added a crib beside it, beside it baffles me. Unless of course the people there are hoping to market to, the, to are those who already have children, or about to have one. Then maybe it is fitting. Peculiar choice of decorations aside, it does make for a nice icebreaker. If it's not on the same level or weird and completely out of the blue. It still leaks better than the awkward silence, which is definitely too out of character for a personality like Mizra. Harnas. How should I start the conversation? Do you think a crib would make a good fit? I think that one looks cute. <sighs> would make a good gift, not good fit, I'm dumb. Good gift, how so? Uh, then it looks cute, I guess. Oh, I think that one looks cute. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hannah box to my surprise. Is she blushing? Is that is she blushing? Shuffling two steps away from the window and glance at it with such vehemence, as if it did something remotely scandalous. A funny sight when taking out of context, and I probably will be laughing really, if I understand what warrants such reaction from her. I, I wasn't looking at the crib. <laughs> Wasn't really talking about the crib, Hana. Very good then. But it wasn't the crib, all right. All right, I get you. But that's not it. Honest. I was just saying the stuff that was on display there looks nice. Uh, or at least as nice as it can be compared to the ones we visited earlier. But, 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 but I'm, I'm sure your interior designer has something different in mind for your mansion, so don't mind me. I was hoping that would be enough to cut the topic short. Yeah, she was blushing. I've been looking under her eyes for long. She guessed she was blushing. Oh, that's amazing. Instead, she sighs, leans on the wall closet closest to her, and runs her hand through a lock of hair. There is a far-flung look in her eyes, even as she fixes it on the concrete curb. Oh, you need to stop looking at people like that, sweetie. I'm afraid I don't quite catch a drift, ma'am. I suppose you wouldn't be aware of it. Do you know you always carry this... this kind of face? Like you're always staring at the world with this honest look. Like all there is to see is all the good in it. I mean, that, that's a, that sounds like a great look. Frankly, I don't see anything wrong if it's like that. I mean, there always has to be something in it. You know, a sprinkle of kindness here and there. Otherwise, we'd all be miserable. For you, maybe. Some people have to fight through it just to see that. And kindness isn't always a great thing to have around. Sometimes too much of it can hurt. Yeah, but then it's no longer a kindness. Then it's just... Blind obedience. It's a yes man. It's not kindness. It makes you wonder where th this is coming from. How bad things have really gone for her to have this view. I do understand her sentiment, really. I, really, I do. Still, when it's the last thing I, you can like, cling to when things have gone irre irreversibly bad, sometimes you simply don't get to make a choice. Besides, the point is, it's impossible to lie when a person is looking at you like that. <laughs> or, or you want to lie to me? But I'd feel like a horrible person afterwards. Did you hear that, Mr. Zack? You just made me feel like a horrible person. Well, I think I can live with that. If that, this is what makes you feel like a horrible person. I sort of wish I have one like it. Just so people would stop lying to my face. Or you can start by being honest with yourself. It shouldn't be quite hard. Friends don't lie to each other, don't they? I guess so. So what was the lie? 
She draws in a breath, lays a soothing hand to her stomach, and. That it was really the crib I was like, <laughs> You're right, Uncle Zag. It's cute, but the pattern's not to Uncle... my taste. I'm pretty sure Marianne could do something about that, though. Uncle Zag, what is that supposed to mean? At the moment, what I should really be worried about is if I'm ever going to be a good mother to this child. Your goddaughter. God, God doctor. Mad! I can't even tell the father he's going to be one in a few months' time! Oh, you are pregnant! Oh, wow, Luke fucked up! Oh, wow. Probably doesn't even want anything to do with this whole pregnancy thing. Yeah, right, because he doesn't... She knows he doesn't want a child. What am I going to do, Zack? Because right now, I'm absolutely at a loss. Oh. Oh. A beat. Oh! Oh! Realization strikes me like a ton of bricks suddenly bearing down on me. <laughs> she was lying to me. You s Oh, more than astonishment must have shown in my face because Hannah lets out a chuckle. The slump on her shoulder disappears altogether underneath her mirth. Don't look so surprised, dearie. <laughs> okay, now she is pregnant. Tied the knot seven years ago, remember? Don't you think it's bound to happen? Only if you want to. She brandishes her hand in front of me, the unassuming silver band on her finger glinting against the late morning sunlight for a second time. For for a second. She eyes it, she eyes it lovingly, almost tenderly, despite the trace of sadness in her voice. For all I know, there is an entire story there. I'd ask, but that would be too inappropriate even for friends. It's not my place to meddle to begin with. Or at least that's what they've been saying early on. My whole social circle would be saying it's a long time coming. But the kid is something you want, right? Because if it ain't, then that's a whole other problem. Yeah, exactly. Of course. I wouldn't deny I've been hoping to have him or her for a long time now. But then, now that we're here, all of a sudden there are a whole lot of other things to be worried about. Business, a new home, public image, my own husband, and I don't know. I didn't really have anyone for a role model. And it's not gonna be any better when you find out that your husband has been cheating. I practically grew up with nursemaids pampering me every step of the way. What if it happens to this baby as well? Hmm. Oh, I can already see how this will end. She has to survive, but at the same time, how good will the future of her child be whether mo if her mother is screwed up like this? After this haunting. Huh. I guess it's not just my sister. What? You and my sister. I mean, you're, you're both having jitters or something like that. Oh, your sister is pregnant too? That's what it's called, right? First baby jitters? Mind you, she was really convinced she'd do everything wrong then. <laughs> he even called me in the middle of the night. Has to switch places the day she found out she's carrying a new member of the family. <laughs> Never mind how utterly impossible her request is. I'm quite sure I haven't done anything of that sort yet. Oh, you don't know that. Oh, 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 oh. oh you don't know that. My brother-in-law has been telling me things five weeks into my sister's pregnancy. Since she's one cranky pregnant lady. Man, good thing I found a place for myself years before that bundle of joy arrived, huh? It can't be that awful. Who knows? I think we'd better leave it for Mr. Wright to decide, yeah? Provided he comes around. Mm. He just sounds so... so repulsed every time the idea is brought up. Then maybe you should say it to his face. No mincing of words or beating around the bushes. And if he says no? You haven't even told him yet. Besides, that's his kid. Don't people usually say fatherhood changes men? I wouldn't call myself a living testament, of course. But there ought to be something that will hit him in that idea alone. <sighs> A wrecking ball would be nice. 
<laughs> Laughter escapes me before I can stop it, and for a moment I thought I have done something wrong when she doesn't join in. He's still her husband, no matter what uh, jest or complaint she hurls out about him behind the media's eyes, or in the presence of people she trusts. <laughs> but when she does, the chuckle, a small insistent sound at first, I find the rest of my unease slipping away. Well, whatever it is, my point is, you've got no idea what will happen. In the same way, you don't know if you'll be a good mom. Trust me, my sis has been there. It's perfectly normal. If uh, my opinion matters, though. A long second of indecision goes by. I can feel her eyes feeling filled with nothing but curiosity, pouring into me while she waits for the rest. It's just a simple sentiment, but one thing I think she needs to hear for all the doubts she unwittingly places on herself. I'm not sure if it should come from me. I'm just not sure if it should come from me. I'll be damned. I think, I think to be a great mother, Hannah. If she has an, has an answer to that, I don't get to hear it, nor does she get to say it. As soon as it's out of my mouth, the bell hanging over the antique store's door chimes and out comes Miss McCullough. For more than one reason, I have never been so relieved our talk got interrupted. Everything's been taken care of for tomorrow, Mrs. Wright. We'll have everything you requested delivered early. I've left them instructions, but I may have to visit again right before your housewarming party to check for a few things. Hmm, right, and that's when you have the breakfast and things. I hope that's acceptable to you. Marvin, Marianne. This is a little early to say, but you did marvelous work with the mansion. I can't wait to see all of it come together tomorrow. I'm only doing my job, ma'am. Needless to say, it's always a pleasure to hear a client is satisfied with my work. Mm. Nonsense! You have every reason to be proud. I know you've already established your name here, but I'll still make sure word gets out, of course. I think I've got a few friends who might be interested in decorating their homes. I'll see if I can introduce you to them tomorrow. I really don't want to impose, Mrs. Wright. There's still a lot to be done, and I'd rather be keeping an eye on it myself. Yeah, she said Mrs. Wright. Ah, yet another uh, translation error, I am assuming. Some people say Miss Wright, some people say Mrs. Wright. It should be Mrs. Wright. Caught it. I was not wrong, I'm not stupid. I'm kind of dumb, but not stupid. I, I, I didn't fool myself. You know well enough, I'll still do it. <laughs> you too, Monsieur Le Photograph. You better be the one taking the pictures for the event tomorrow, or I'll be very upset. I blink at her, confused. Last I checked, I have nothing scheduled on my plate tomorrow. A couple of fleeting thoughts did cross my mind, like working on personal projects, but with the expectant expression on Hannah's face alone. I wondered before how they got Isabella to sell in the mansion with all the paperwork and the loops it has to go through. Well now, the how is already standing in front of me, and it's one giant ball of persuasion in human form. <laughs> if I have any doubts how she got around life, all of them have been dispelled right this instant. Harness hasn't said anything yet, but I already know what my answer will be. What event? Our housewarming party, dearie. I've already sent invites through your publisher. They should have informed you of it by now. Not to me. I may have probably missed it. I haven't gotten the chance to check my mailbox yet. If deadlines, real life happenings, you know. They can be pretty hectic. I'll try later, but they might have already assigned it to a different photographer if they haven't received my reply yet. That's not a problem. Nothing a little call from me can't fix. I'll have them know I'm specifically requesting for your presence. It shouldn't be too hard. Just promise me you'll show up. I expect to see you both there. No excuses. Okay, so I didn't know this was a thing I had, but she is she is asserting a dominance, okay? Whoa! <laughs> okay. She knows what she wants and she's not afraid to take it. Good company, good music, good food. 
course I'll be there. Lovely. I hope we have that settled then. I'd love to stay and chat, but unfortunately I have an appointment scheduled with the doctors after this. You two will have to excuse me. Are you feeling fine, ma'am? It's nothing... big. There is a short while in, in which her hand faintly touches her stomach when she says this. Her smile as she does so, a tender thing in itself, she might never let it cross her mind, but motherhood would suit her. The kid is already loved, even when he or she has yet to have a sense of the world. Candid moments like this, I wish I had brought a ca camera for. Sorry we had to cut this short. I'd love to have lunch with you two, but... Well, you two know how it goes. Hmm. It's quite fine, Mrs. Wright. I need to get going as well. Is it somewhere far from here? I can have my driver drop you off on the way. No, no please. Th there's no need for that, Mrs. Wright. It's just within the city. I see. What about you, Zack? We did leave your push bike at the mansion. Push bike? Okay. Uh, don't worry, I'll have someone bring it to your home later. Nah, I'll, I'll live within the city too. A few blocks from here, in fact. I only visited earlier because... The photos. Damn, I've completely forgotten about them. My hand grazes the side of my pocket where I kept them since this morning. And sure enough, they're still there, waiting for the whole world to see them. Because? Zack, sweetie, you're zoning out. I... Uh, Miss Hana, earlier, at the mansion. Should I still show her the photos? Yes. She needs to see them because she knows there's something going on here. But that does... Oh no, she doesn't care because she didn't care in... Uh, during the party. See, this is yet another reason why... Uh, Zack's story should be before Hana's. I think it would be better if you take a look at these yourself. That's that scared her off. Ah, man, I am so bad at this. But now we've seen it, so uh, disturbed Zachary divided decided to show the photographs to Hannah himself. He was greeted by a wary look right upon arriving at the mansion. Just in time, Hannah appears to save Zachary from further interrogation. At her request, Zach accompanies her to Luxborn City. Okay, that that was it. Hmm. Seeing is believing, right? I reach into my pocket and pull out the photos, handing everything to her. Recognition flickers across her eyes when she reaches for them, and I have uh, to stamp down the tiny twinge of regret in my stomach for having the gall to show it to her. Only it cuts deeper the instant both her and Miss McCullough expresses sh expression changes. It's not a good look. To say she's repulsed would be a total understatement. All this time, Anna has been nothing but direct, saying what she feels, expressing, expressing what she wants. Away from the glamour and the camera lenses, she's a whole different person. But as she goes through each of the pictures, can't get her get an easy read on her. I... Uh, Zach? Derry? What is this? Your photos. The ones you requested copies of. I mean, they came out that way and... I thought you should know. Oh, I get it. You know, I've heard before that artists can be a bit weird. Have you ever gotten that kind of comment, Marianne? Not in my line of work, I'm afraid. Or ever, Mrs. Wright. I'd rather keep my personal hobbies away from my actual work. Less stress that way. Well, I suppose it just never crossed my mind that the saying applies to you as well, Zack. But talent's what's important, hmm? As long as you make good art, it doesn't matter. Oh, no, that's... You see, when we had that photo shoot yesterday, there was something. I wouldn't say I don't appreciate it. I did ask for copies, darling. But would it be possible for you to give me normal-looking ones? Preferably with my head intact. He says why... Oh, Lord. I admire the effort you took to edit this, though. It looks authentic. 
Frankly, if I show this to some other person, they'd probably believe those silly rumors about the mansion. Good publicity, but not the kind I'd want for my new home. So please. So please. She drops them back in my hands like they're very surface burns, burn hers. If you could redo this, that would be wonderful. I'm positive you can do a better job than the one you just showed. Like I said, she doesn't believe it because she didn't really care when the ghost showed up at the party. Just try to keep the edits to a minimum, hmm? Uh, yeah. I can, sure. You can take your time, of course. And speaking of time, I really must go. She leaves without so much as a wave. I don't have to take a guess to know I've dismayed her. Or in her own words, weirded her out. Besides me, beside me, Miss McCulloch shakes her head. What are the odds I've also ruined my chances with the job she offered earlier? Very high, I'd say. It's a foolish idea in the first place. Miss McCullough departs shortly after me, after Mrs. Miss. See, this is what I'm talking about. Miss Wright has taken her leave, muttering something about getting a quick lunch before fetching Beruthiel from Chris. Now, we can't read that because that is something that happens in the next... No, that happens now, I believe. Um, at Luxburn City, Zachary and Hannah met with Marianne McCullough. While Marianne was busy, Hannah disclosed her pregnancy and her frustrations to Zach. At the end of their talk, Zachary showed her the photos, which earned the disapproval of both women. Wow. That sucks. But that is where we end today's episode. And we are almost uh, done uh, with uh, Isabella's run in this episode since uh, McCullough, since Marianne is going to fetch Beruthiel from the city, which is where Isabella met her and things like that. You know what I mean. If you're watching watch these episodes, you know what I'm talking about. And if you want to watch more of this, you have to come back in the future. And if you want to watch something else that I've been playing, you can find it at the bottom, bottom of the screen. And remember, just because you're not the main character doesn't mean you're not important. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>